Hello, Aaron here with GrowLawnUglyWeeds.com. Hope everybody's doing awesome. And today I'm doing a follow-up on the Take All Root Rot uh, peat moss application we did several months ago and just wanted to show the, the kind of results that you should expect from the peat moss. So let's get right into this. All right, so I guess it was probably like April or May and I was struggling with some take all root rot in my St. Augustine in this area right here. And you can see I have a magnifying glass so I can check out the runners to make sure that, that the take all root rot is gone. But this area was all yellow and the runners were necrotic and they had, you can tell in the runners where they have, if you look through a magnifying glass of like 20X, you'll be able to see like brown, like little spider web things on the runners. Um, sometimes you need a little bit more magnification than that, but that'll, you could probably see it with that if it's really bad. So what I did is I used a leaf rake right here and I raked out just the, the little bit of area that I'm gonna treat. And as you can see, that's a lot of thatch for that little bitty area. I mean, we're only talking about maybe two feet by two feet, and that's a lot. And that's where that take all root rot is living is in that thatch. And my partner Cheyenne over here is investigating this little area. This area is probably five by five, maybe. And this is the thatch that we got out of there. And it didn't even look like much thatch to begin with, but there's where that take all root rot surviving is in your thatch. So. I raked out the thatch, my, my helper and I did. And now we're gonna apply just a real thin layer of peat moss. Stay tuned. So as you can see, this area is recovering nice. Although it's in shade, and that's why you're still seeing the thin areas. But the take all root rot is all gone. And that's because take all root rot doesn't like low pH soils. It likes alkaline soils. That's what, and most of our soils in the area are very alkaline. And a lot of the soil testing that I've done, you'll you'll have soil. Uh, the, sorry, the soil pH will be around 7.7. .7. And if we can start to lower that, or at least balance it out, you're going to start to see some results. And all the runners get close. Now I did spray this with humic acid and iron yesterday. So you're gonna see a little bit of staining on some of the leaves. Uh, and that's all that is. It's not, it's not a disease or anything. It's just the humic acid is brown and in the iron and so it just stains. And it's a foil, foliar application. So it takes a, a few days or weeks to completely absorb and eventually it'll turn it even more green. So you can see these healthy roots here. That's completely healthy all green you don't see the yellow uh where's another one here's an, here's another one so you can see where it's stained the humic acids and iron stained that that's the way a runner should look you know it shouldn't have yellowing or black spots or anything like that on there for um take all root rot you want to apply peat moss you can also apply sulfur, although sulfur takes a lot longer to work and it's, it's just not, it's not as effective as peat moss, but it is easier to apply. It's fair to say. We were, we were also having a problem over here with the take all root rot. And you can see that's all gone too. There's no yellowing and the grass is really, really healthy. Now a lot, some of the factors that help with take all root rot is good cultural practices like this this is my lawn i water it properly it's getting two inches of water in the hottest part of the season and i adjust my water according to the season i mow it at three to three and a half inches every week it's never had a mowing skipped and had to go two weeks without mowing i dethatch my yard in the early spring and i don't apply a bunch of herbicides to this yard and in our lawn care program, we don't apply a lot of herbicides to St. Augustine. 
St. Augustine is very sensitive in the North Texas area because we're growing it at the northernmost point of where it will grow. So hard winters, rainy springs, rainy falls are very stressful on St. Augustine. It's super sensitive. The leaf blades are very wide. So anytime you do put down a herbicide, it's gonna catch a lot of it. So you wanna avoid herbicides as much as possible. It may be necessary to spot treat here and there. There's some St. Augustine lawns that are completely healthy can withstand a blanket spray of weed control, but the ones that are not too healthy, you should really avoid it and get your lawn in good health before you start blanket spraying with a herbicide. Cultural practices are very important in the care of St. Augustine lawn. Also, this lawn is in partial shade. Although St. Augustine is not a shade grass, when it's 100 degrees or higher in the North Texas area, I mean, it's really gonna stress out St. Augustine being in full sun. So if you can, if you have full sun and really go with TIF 419 Bermuda, Common Bermuda Celebration, Zoysia, something like that, uh, St. Augustine just, and it just cooks it. It cooks Bermuda too, but you have a better chance with it. I can't stress enough, it's cultural practices, plus peat moss, dethatching, core aeration, liquid aeration, all of these things are part of what I've done to get this grass healthy again from this take all root rot and gray leaf spot. So if you got any questions about take all root rot, or a gray leaf spot or any kind of kind of lawn disease, St. Augustine, Bermuda, whatever it is, please don't hesitate to give us a call at 817-447-7711 or you could reach us on our website at uglyweeds.com. Thanks and please subscribe to the channel. Have a good day.